thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo here today at Trump National Golf Club, joined by the president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. How are you, Eileen? I'm doing well. How are you? Well, very, very well. We have some very exciting awards to talk about today. Um, some honorees that mm -hmm. you're going to introduce us to yes. for the Salute to Business 2014. Mm -hmm. First of all, tell us how they're selected. Oh, that's a great question, Maria. All of the nominations for these, for these awards are submitted by Chamber of Commerce members. Okay. And they will write nominations about other Chamber of Commerce businesses um, who they feel has distinguished themselves along any number of different criteria. They might look at things like customer service, innovation, investment in the community, maybe job creation and economic development impact. They will write the nominations. They will be submitted to a committee of members who reviews them, and they review them anonymously. They don't know who submitted them. Okay. The committee makes their selection for who they feel best represents excellence in business for this year, and then those recommendations get turned over to our board of directors for their ratification. Very good. Well, mm -hmm. when we come back, we are going to meet the honorees. Don't go anywhere. The first honoree is Trump National Golf Club, Lily Amini, General Manager. We obviously are open our doors to the community, to the locals, and I'm a local girl, so I understand the mentality when you walk into a place like this. You want to be welcomed. And we, everybody, you know, like the whole cheers thing, everybody wants to know your name, and it's true. You know, we have tons of regulars that walk through our doors every day, but we also have everyone from all around the world. So we have to walk that fine line between being exclusive, but also being local and family friendly as well. And I think we do a really, really good job. Um, and I know that the local community appreciates that because when they walk in, our, our, our staff from the hosts to the servers, to the valet, everyone knows each other. And they're just like, hi, welcome back. And it's just a warm, warm, good feeling. And it's, it's really hard to believe sometimes that we are more than just a golf course. You know, we have amazing food, you know, prepped by Jean-Pierre and our amazing culinary staff. So we make sure, again, it's a fine line. We have to focus on all aspects of the business. It's not just golf. It's dining. It's banquets. It's everything. I can't tell you how many times we've heard people say, you know, I'm coming from Orange County or Pasadena or even across the world, literally, to say we want to have our, our wedding there. We, they've seen pictures, and uh, again, it's a picturesque spot. You can't beat it. Um, it's very exclusive and it's secluded, so people love that aspect of it. They come out, they get their own private valet. They don't you know, have to really do much. We do everything for them. So they know that that Trump touch is, is always a part of their experience here, and that's another reason why. They see the name, and they know that they're going to get um, everything kind of a, that that is associated with the name. Everyone can can see when you walk through the doors. There's changes almost daily. And we put the money back into the facility all the time, um, and I think it shows. I think when you walk around and you see the progression since we first bought the the entire property, Mr. Trump had, um, you see the progression of of what it has become. And I think that that's something that we never will stop doing. I think it's always really really important to keep a business fresh whether it's your ideas or even the decor. Every single person who's hired here goes through an interview process, and so we see it right before our eyes, local, you know, Palos Verdes, San Pedro, and um, I love that aspect of this, of this place. And it's, again, it's that sense of community. It's their families come here. I always ask them, why Trump? Why did you want to work here? And they always say, well, my parents come here all the time. Um, we, we get a phone call, hey, so-and-so is gonna come out, and it's, it's a big VIP or celebrity, and we wanna make sure that they're comfortable as well because there's nothing like it. There's nothing like this golf course. I mean, 18 holes on the ocean. Everywhere that they go, there's a view. So, And that lends itself to a great event day. Even if you're gonna come out here and play golf and your golf maybe not you know, on, on PGA level, um, you still have a wonderful time. I have seen the progression firsthand of this, of this facility and I can't thank the chamber enough um, for honoring us this year. We are so proud of, uh, of our staff and I, I can't thank them enough because this is a perfect time to, to celebrate what we've done and, and how the community also has helped us. It's, it's a team effort. Our next honoree is Apothecary Beauty Boutique, Francine Calora, owner. My name is Francine Calora and I opened Apothecary Beauty in 2011 and I decided to open here in the peninsula because when I used to service as an account executive I felt that there was a need for a beauty boutique in the area. When I first started, it was challenging. It was definitely a challenge to get customers to say, oh, I'm gonna shop at Apothecary Beauty because they didn't know who I was. 
So what I started incorporating was a beauty um, rewards program or an events program where they would sign up and we would tell the customer that if they didn't like something or they liked something, we would have it in their file. And so it kind of grew from that and I incorporated Facebook and Instagram and Twitter along with um, just ongoing uh, events. And I've been in the beauty industry for 15 years, so I saw what was out there. So we carry about 30 different brands. Our biggest brands are like Bare Minerals, Kevin O'Quan, which is a makeup line, as well as Dermalogica and Darfon. We just carry a little bit of everything, as well as we do services. We um, recently incorporated facials and brow services. We cater to um, a high schooler as well as a stay-at-home mom. So it's really different uh, skin type. So we really carry lines like Mario Badescu that's maybe a, st a student that's really starting out but really needs to get into a skincare regimen. So if they're not really sure what they need, a lot of times a lot of customers say they're um, sensitive. So we recommend to sample, try it out, tell us what they feel, and then come back and purchase. So we really try to cater in sampling versus buy the product, come back and not be happy. I think it's really important to be involved in the community. I think that that's how they get to know who I am as a person as well as how the store is. And so I got involved a lot with the street fair, with the chamber. I do a lot of partnerships with local businesses because I think it's important that we work together versus um, you know, say, oh, this is my client. I think it's really important that we should all share our clients because we all have such a unique business. I don't think someone does what I do. and. And I think that they can just flourish and help collaborate together. So it's really important. Being an award winner is, is an honor because I'm a very new business. And I know that a lot of businesses that have this award have been in the business for 10 to 15 years. So it seems that all of my efforts, especially with my team, have been helping me uh, reach out to the community and let them know that we are here. We do makeup. We do services. We're here to service you. We're not just here for the sale. We're here to stay for the long run. So I hope that the community can see that we're, we're part of this community. We're just not like a big retail box. And if you continue to support us, we support you as well. I'm passionate about my customers and what they need. So it's really important that my customers know that I'm a local business. I'm a South Bay girl who's just, you know, just trying to get involved in the community and, and help everyone be beautiful. Our next honoree is the Norris Center for the Performing Arts, Julie Mo Reynolds, Chairman of the Board. The business 30 years ago was really run by a lot of volunteers. We had a, an entire community that was so behind the theater and the marketing was done by a volunteer and we had very little staff back then. We probably had four staff members, maybe, maybe three and a half. But as the operation has grown from one theater, to now the pavilion and then to the education center. Now we have a staff, I think we have 19 part-time staff and we have eight full-time staff. And we probably will grow past that. Like most theaters, um, they're very expensive to run. So you always end up underwriting quite a few seats, you know, the amount of money for each seat. So we saw the continual fundraising as a challenge as far as growing the theater. So the next logical step was to have some operating unit that brought in cash to the top line. Okay. And that's how we came up with the pavilion. We needed two things at that point. We were growing rapidly, so we needed staff offices and the theater didn't, there was nowhere to house them. But number two, we needed something that would bring in cash to help underwrite the facilities and actually operating the theater. Mm -hmm. So that's when we came up with the pavilion idea. Actually, my father is the one who had the mastermind. This used to be a post office. And then again, the community came together and fundraised it and built it. We had crews of people coming in and doing the masonry and it was it was really amazing. I think we had 1.63 people one day working on this facility to get it up and I think 50 percent of them were volunteers. So it's really pretty cool how the communities come together. Our education program grew very rapidly and we ended up not being able to rent this facility as much as we wanted to because we had so many education shows and classes in here. So the original thing to put the pavilion here to help underwrite it was getting to be a 50-50 type of uh, scenario and we had more education. So we saw that need and it was a need that our entire public needs because the schools obviously are moving the arts out. Right. So we saw that and we became really popular doing it. So we were able to get an education facility that's adjacent to the theater and it's running 24 seven 
But this is owned by the community. This is not an individual business. This is not a Norris business. This is a community asset. So it's for everybody. It's everybody's. And I think the more people are educated about that, years ago they all knew about it because they came together and did it. Now we're passing on that knowledge to the younger demographic that's in our society and in our community. Well, I'm just really thrilled that they, they selected us. And, and it's such a wonderful year to, to do that. We have so many wonderful things going on. We have a lot of new board members. And I think it is just an affirmation of appreciation, not only for the chamber and our relationship, but for the Norse's relationship all over the community. So I'm really thrilled to be honored. And the chamber does so many amazing things for our community. I don't see how we would exist without them. Our next honoree is Susie Zimmerman, State Farm Insurance. Susie Zimmerman. I uh, grew up in Illinois and I went to University of Illinois. When I graduated, I started with State Farm Insurance. Um, in their corporate offices. I uh, worked in St. Louis and then moved out here about 25 years ago. Uh, about six years ago, I opened Susie Zimmerman State Farm Insurance, and it's been just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity, just uh, having a great time. Insurance, um, there are a lot of uh, competitors out there, uh, and we really pride ourselves in uh, getting to know our clients. We have a real relationship and connection with them. We uh, really take a look at uh, their needs and we uh, develop uh, individualized plans so that their uh, assets are covered. We're really um, focused on establishing that personal relationship and protecting our clients. I've got a great team. I've got a wonderful group of uh, very experienced professional agents that work here in the office with me. Um, a lot of them have been with me. They worked with me on the corporate side of State Farm and when I opened my business they came over and joined me here. So we have a lot of very knowledgeable, uh, personable people in this office. Uh, being a part of the community is very important uh, to me personally and, uh, and as a State Farm agent. I've always wanted that connection um, to give back uh, because I feel like I've been very fortunate in my life and my career. Uh, when I first opened my office here in Palos Verdes, I uh, reached out and joined the Rotary Club. And the Rotary is just a wonderful group, group of uh, individuals, and they've been very supportive of me. In fact, uh, this year they've made me their president, which has <laughs> kept me very, very busy besides work. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a wonderful experience, and, and I really appreciate the time uh, that they've uh, given me to do that. Uh, then I'm also involved uh, through Rotary. I, I met uh, an individual who introduced me to the Boys and Girls Club of Los Angeles Harbor. I'm a board member there and uh, very um, supportive of the work that they're doing for the youth in that uh, area. And uh, you know, just really feel committed to um, to helping the kids there. The key to success, uh, I think, it just starts with uh, you. Ha you really have to believe in the business, believe in yourself, uh, and be positive. Uh, keep a po Everything comes at you all the time, so it's just be fluid and be positive uh, and work hard. I mean, it's, it's all about hard work and it, it pays off. It was really uh, wonderful uh, to be honored by the, the Chamber Salute to Business. I was really overwhelmed when I um, opened my business six years ago. I never anticipated that it would grow to this level and, and that I would get this much recognition. It just has really meant a lot to be honored by the, the Chamber for this. Our next honoree is Premier Bank of Palos Verdes, Mr. John Poland. Well, the business bank is really focused on the needs of a particular customer, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's sort of a one-size-fits-all approach. And the uniqueness about our bank is that we really try to find out what's going on with the customer, what it is they're trying to accomplish, and then come up with some sort of a solution that works. So if they're trying to grow their business or they're trying to buy another business or expand or they just need working capital, we just look at what is it that you need, what you're trying to accomplish. And that's really what a, what a true business bank ought to do, and that's what we do. A lot of people today are exiting the bigger bank cultures, and they'd really like to know their banker. Right. So we really try to be a friend, a strategic partner, um, establish a relationship with them, have them have a relationship with many people in our bank, we're really trying to build this long-term relationship with the client and that everybody in the bank knows that client and knows what they do, knows what they need, and tries to be their banker. 
When we opened up, we wanted to offer a product to any new business that came in the door, whether it be a, a service. I know that we offered a new, I hate to tell anybody this, but we offered a new business free banking services for their first year of operation. Just, we were so excited that a new business opened up here on the hill and we need more of them. And in the shopping center we're in, we know there's going to be a lot of growth and some new businesses and we hope that we can help them in some way make their, you know, their quest cheaper, easier, less brain damage and uh, be here for them. To be part of a community, you need to be part of its fabric. And so, you know, we need we need customers and customers need us, you know, for us to make money, but we need to also play our part and have them want to do business with us because we're helping them, we're assisting them, we're involved in the things that, that our customers value, whether it be athletics or civic or service or charitable. And so we do that. We like to do that. We've been doing it a long time and we take leadership roles in all of these type of um, organizations. I've been on the Hill here for uh, 22 years and I've been a member or, you know, when I was at other organizations, I wasn't as active. I was just probably approving the check for Debbie Richardson, who was always our go-to person to be right. involved. But I'm on the board of the chamber now and I've been involved, you know, for a few years. But um, it's, it's another great organization that is here to serve the local businesses that we support and we honor. We'd like to thank the Chamber for honoring us. We're very grateful, honored, and we're, we're going to keep it up. Uh -huh. Our last award is the Matt Bruning Award for Excellence in Business. It's given posthumously to Mr. Frank A. Vanderlip, Sr. My grandfather wasn't a real estate developer. He was a banker, and he was working in, in New York. He's up in his office, and some salesmen come to visit, and they're selling a property out in California. He got on his private train a couple of years later and came across the country and uh, got into a big Packard and drove down here to Palos Verdes and came over the top of the hill and there it was. I mean, the Amalfi Coast, Sorrento, there's Catalina and there's the Pacific Ocean and there's all the points. It's just stunning. So he went back to New York and uh, a couple of years later the United States was engaged in war and. His partners decided they didn't want to own a bunch of land out in California, so he, he had to buy them out. From that time until, basically until he passed away, he had this huge, fantastic asset. He had the Palos Verdes Peninsula. The main thing is he went from zero to 100. He was born on a farm, uh, as a, basically raising chickens, and, and uh, his father died when he was very young. He went to work as a machinist. Uh, he learned shorthand while he was working a, a lathe. He became a financial analyst, he became a journalist, a job in the U.S. Treasury, and then he got a job as an, as an employee at what became Citibank, at, at National Citibank. And he says in his book, it was in, in six job changes, he went from being a farmhand to being president of the biggest bank in the United States. In his own words, he attributes that to the fact that he just liked to work. My grandfather, first of all, he had six kids and he loved his children and he did everything he could to make them happy. He taught them to dance, he taught them to be, to be on stage, and his wife really filled in all those gaps. My grandfather left a couple of marks on the peninsula. During his time, he built the roads. There weren't very many roads. The roads were basically for carts for the farmers. He was big on education. He donated the land that's now Chadwick School. He built houses down on Palos Verdes Drive South here in Portuguese Bend, Palos Verdes Estates and Mira Leste, um, which were the big developments during his tenure. After he died, there was a lot of development done by the family. I think Frank Vanderlip would be extremely happy to walk out onto the terrace of his house that he built a long time ago and look out at the view that he, that he first saw a long time ago and discover that the view is intact, the house is intact. I'm very happy and proud for my grandfather that his legacy, that, that his image, that his, his ideas and that, that his aesthetic 
have survived this long. And I think it's wonderful that the Palestrese Chamber of Commerce is, sees fit to support him and to, and to recognize him. Well, that was quite an impressive list, Eileen. Mm -hmm. How much fun these awards are going to be this mm -hmm. year. It will also be right here at Trump National on March the 13th, which is a Thursday night. Who are the sponsors this year for the event, Eileen? Oh, thank you for asking, Maria. We are so excited to have both Malaga Bank and Trump National Golf Club as presenting sponsors for this event. They are true community partners. And we are joining, what, over 200 people in our community at this event. Tell us about that. Yes, absolutely. Business leaders, community leaders, and government leaders will all be here. The public is invited to attend. Just contact the chamber for your invitation. Don't forget to join us right here at Trump National for the Business Awards. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.